model of your head. The conscious is your writer. It's responsible for very short-term memory. Does anyone here struggle remembering people's names? It's because you're tapping into the wrong memory bank. You're tapping into the conscious instead of the subconscious. Subconscious has a permanent memory, number four, remembers everything. Now, this is your willpower, your conscious, and this is your value structure. So just think this way. Have you ever met someone, let's say someone who's addicted to alcohol or to drugs or just to something, rage, um, and after they've acted out inappropriately, in a moment of what appears to be um, lucidity, sobriety, they will say, I promise I'll never do that again. I know exactly what I was doing and I'm never going to act that way again. You've got my word. I don't want to and I know that it's wrong. <clears throat> Willpower and values are speaking. So let's say I'm the alcoholic. I say, Sherry, I won't do it again. She says, well, it's good, Rich, because if you do it again, I'm leaving. You've lost the children. You'll lose everything. I'll kick you out of the house. Well, I've got some real motivation to kind of keep myself sober, right, just to drink water instead of something else. Well, what happens the minute I start getting triggered? What's going on when I get triggered? My beliefs are what about me if I'm an alcoholic? You're not an alcoholic. I might say that I'm not an alcoholic, right? But my wife's called me one. I admitted that I drank too much recently and I've created problems. If I'm an alcoholic, what am I believing about myself? If I get in pain, you can't function without it. I can't function without it. So if I'm an alcoholic and I have pain facing me right in the face, I have uh, some sort of anxiety coming over me, What's the decision I make about my behavior? If I don't think I can live without alcohol, what's my subconscious telling me I have to do? I have to get a drink. No matter of willpower in the world will stay that drive of the internal, the subconscious, from abating pain. And the brain cannot differentiate between pain or a drug created from the inside and a drug taken from the outside. So whether I take a drink of alcohol, shoot up with heroin, or act out anger, rage, criticism, sarcasm. The brain can't tell the difference. A drug is a drug. And it's driven at the subconscious level, at a level very few people are even aware it's happening to them. Just a couple of things to consider. Um, in the subconscious, that's where power is. That's where change happens. And if you're a religious person, that's where God resides. That's where miracles happen. Inside there is where you cannot judge, meaning um, from age zero to four, no matter what happens to you, gets imprinted on your subconscious. And anyone who's studied this will know. From zero to four, it's imprinted on there. At four years old, roughly, they create what's called a critical faculty. You see the little dotted line around that? The critical faculty is the filter to stop things from coming into the subconscious that isn't already there and aligned. So I may come up to you. Okay, let's say that I'm the drunk and you're going to be my coach. And you say, Rich, you've got to learn how not to do that. So the next time you are in a lot of pain, you do X and Y. All right. All right. And I go, oh, that sounds really good. But as soon as I start having pain, does X and Y happen? Because the critical faculty won't let it get written onto my permanent memory. I don't allow it to get in there. So the only way that I can change a behavior is by having enough experiences to create a different belief structure or access into that permanent memory somehow to take away the trauma associated with the event. So let's say at age five, something bad happened to me. And I, I believe, according to my five-year-old, that I have to act out inappropriately. That's how I became the drunk. So I'm going to have you, that, that's going into a parking lot right now. We're going to come back to this. So it's a very good question, thanks. All right. Number six is the last thing I want to share here. Number six is the mechanism that each of us have built into us that says, I'm going to protect you from harm. Another way to say it is, it's my self-saboteur. Now, is it doing me any good to, to go ahead and get drunk, even though my wife and my five children are, are being harmed because of that? You see, it's no, no logical reason at all for me to drink, except my subconscious says, I've got to save you from pain. People don't get high on drugs. That's a myth. Why are people doing drugs then? To get 
Gasping pain. Because they're covering pain to get numb. There's no such thing as getting high. It means that you're just higher than you were before. <laughs>